Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, we discuss my thoughts on episode 25 of the anime series Classic Alloyed. For all intents and purposes, the finale episode, and it was balls to the wall. I had actually begun to wonder if the aliens that debuted at the end of the previous episode were actually legit tried and true aliens, um, you know, or if this was some kind of grand fake out at the hands of Kanai's father or something to try to get the Classic Alloyds to band together and unite their music, you know, and everything. I mean, they're all pretty much living in the manor house, so you can't really unite them any further than that. I mean, even Bada and Tchaikov are there, and, and the only one really that still need would need to be involved would be Baksama. And, um, so a as we see, though, these aliens, they're the real deal, and they're calling back on the Voyager probe from 1977, and I'm getting shades of Star Trek The Motion Picture with V'ger and everything. <laughs> Like that. And uh, it's it just, I lost myself after that. I was like, okay, this is once again absurdity and hilarity is about to ensue. And I was really surprised that Boxama, he, he actually somehow repaired the octopus temporarily, so in any case, very quickly. He like plants this thing on the backyard, <laughs> you know, of Kadai's property behind the manor house. And he's trying to, you know, like implore all of the classical lords, look, we, we should do something. If you have any care or concern for the well-being of this planet, for all of humanity, we must do something. He's talking about having a sense that somewhere out there in the universe, there must have been someone listening to his music. How? How could he have that sense at all? <laughs> you know, I have no idea. But that played out to be true. I mean, these aliens, they're, they're like you know, plowing through the earth and plowing through buildings and sucking people up into their vehicles. Uh, you know, they got these rainbow beams and everything. And at one point, Kanai's father, who is one of the people sucked up into this thing, of course, he contacts Kanai again and shows that there's like a microphone hanging from the ceiling. And Sosuke gets this idea, oh, maybe it's karaoke or something. <laughs> you know, He takes off. He gets himself transported up to one of these ships. He starts to try to sing his one song. You can't even call it a one hit wonder. It's one hit garbage. And they immediately vomit him the hell back out again. <laughs> You know, it's insane. And um, at this point, you know, Bach is getting nowhere with the rest of the Classicaloids. It actually takes Kanai, the grand conductor of the Classicaloids, in a sense, as Bach Sama put forth in the previous episode, it takes her asking for their help, you know, wanting to save the Earth, wanting to save her manor house and, and all of her memories. And just at her asking... <laughs> just once they're all like well why didn't you ask in the first place and every single classical lawyer is like all right let's rock <laughs> you know we'll get into the octopus we'll activate it we'll put on a grand concert a grand show for these aliens who really want to hear this music and that's what they do and it's absolutely captivating i mean they're all planted into this thing and they're all putting on this show for these aliens and one by one by one, all across the world, they're winning over these aliens through the little emojis that they're communicating through on the bottoms of their vessels <laughs> and everything. And uh, they release people, and, and Sosuke finally gets back to the manor house just as they're concluding this to try to implore them all that, wait, the, these aliens, they're not here to actually enslave humanity, destroy humanity or the Earth. They just wanted to hear the music, and now they're clamoring as they're, you know, shooting their rainbow beams all over the place, uh, uh, you know, destroying whole skyscrapers and, you know, uh, ripping wedges through the streets and the infrastructure of the world. They just want an encore. They just want to hear more of this precious music and everything. And here's proof that they're actually compassionate. They're not trying to wipe us out. When we all got thrown back out of the vessels, we landed safely and softly, soundly, back on the ground below. <laughs> <laughs> and you would think, you know, the way they're flung out of the vessels, they're all going to crash to the ground and become roadkill, you know. But no, that these aliens had prepared for that. They don't want to harm anyone. They just want the music. They just want to hear it and then experience it. And this is the turning point in the episode that I actually just lost my mind. I absolutely loved and adored it because it was the last thing I would ever have expected. You got Motes being like, well, Sosuke, since it's your idea... And he whisks out his wand, he, he summons forth the music, and he transforms Sosuke right there, along with Padkun. Padkun kind of transforms into this, like, you know, rocket-powered surfboard type of, thing. <laughs> you know, jet-powered thing. Um, and Sosuke completely 
transforms into like duds that look exactly like the classical Lloyds, uh, uh, sort of timeless fashions, if you will, that they all transform into whenever they summon forth their music. And then Motes is looking at Beats. He's like, what about her? You know, can I as well? And he's like, all right, let's rock. <laughs> so he does the same. He summons forth the music. He turns Hashi into a giant sort of like jet powered bird that she can ride on the back of where Sosuke is flying on the back of, uh, you know, the jet powered pad -kun. And both of them are suddenly decked out in these classical threads. And the whole idea, the whole like impetus behind this is humanity itself has to be the ones to communicate, not just the classical lords. We're special beings. It has to be sort of at the ground level. Humanity and the best representatives that the classical lords can come up with. And most of them are kind of like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> We're sending these two. But Beats and Motes know what they're doing. They're like, these two have to go in our stead. They have to be the voice through which we will speak our music. And it's just epic. It's just a, a spectacular spectacle to see them racing up toward these ships. And you have the almost force spirit versions of Beats and Motes uh, guiding them and telling them, you know, prepare and you're enjoying this and, and you're a really strong girl in Kanai's case, told by Beethoven. And I just, I was loving it. I never would have expected that they would get so much of the focus, that they would garner so much acclaim by the Classicaloids. And it's only fitting for how much both of these, you know, average everyday human beings have been there for them and supported them and made a home for them. Gone on adventures, ad nauseum, ad infinitum with them. I just loved that they were the ones who were able to transform and be that through line between the Classicaloids and the aliens for the sake of humanity. They were humanity's best representatives in the here and now, in the moment. And it was just so epic once they crashed through many floors of the alien vessel, within which you see like a bedroom, a TV room, there's a kitchen and everything. You know, they end up in what is presumably like the entertainment center, uh, you know, and they're kind of like freaked out. They don't know exactly what they're going to do. Kanai and Sosuke. And all of a sudden you have these spirit sort of holographic versions of each one of the classic Lloyds, starting with beats, all forming around the circular perimeter of this room. These aliens, these globulous aliens make themselves shown, uh, you know, reveal themselves. And all of a sudden the music begins. The music Ode to Joy, one of Beethoven's classics that I love. It's such an inspiration to listen to, of course, modernized with lyrics and everything like that, as per usual for the series. And each of the classicaloids, I mean, they're spinning around the room. Each of them are coming up, zooming up to, the, you know, the full frame of, of the screen. And they're, they're, you know, sharing their love for these aliens, their welcoming nature. They're, they're being thankful and grateful that some other beings out there appreciate their music. And I'm just literally goosebumps. I'm watching this and I'm awestruck. And I'm like, I never would have ever guessed that this would be how this would culminate. <laughs> you know, at the center of this movement, literally are, are Kanai and Sosuke. And they are awestruck as much as I am the viewer. And I just, like I said, goosebumps. I was loving every minute of it. They put on their encore. And when everything is said and done, all of the, the sort of spirit forms of the Classicaloids disappear the the outfits go back to normal for Kanai and Sosuke. They fall through the floor once again, <laughs> landing safely back on Earth, sending these aliens happily home once again. And it, it almost started to wind down to like a, a minor bum out because soon thereafter do we find, you know, Kanai is at home by herself. She gets a message from her father who's still traveling abroad and hiding whatever he's doing. He's living footloose and fancy free, very happily so and everything like that. She's just happy to hear from him, happy that he is happy. He's enjoying himself. And she's got the manor house to herself. She's talking about, you know, Sosuke seems to be very lonely, but he's actually been inspired by this to try to make something of himself along, you know, a musical career. He decides to be a street performer. And at that moment, at that exact moment when he's about to start singing, there's like Chopin, Liz, and I think Schubert behind them. They're just coming back from <laughs> their travels. They've been, they decided to take some time off and travel to all the countries, as Kanai says, that their music was uh, affected by in this alien incursion event and everything like that. And they're finally back, you know, <laughs> they got a bunch of stuff and they're, they're ridiculing Sosuke. How could you make your debut performance when we're all not here, when we're all on vacation? Liz is like summoning everybody to look and listen. 
And Sosuke completely loses his crap. He's scared out of his mind like a bat out of hell. He goes back, <laughs> back to the manor house as fast as he can. And so then in the manor house, he's putting on his pseudo performance where he's just sort of air guitaring Pad Kun and humming. And at this point, uh, Beats and Motes come home as well. And, and Motes is all excited. He's like, oh, a performance. And he's throwing the laundry around. They're wrecking the whole house again. And Kanai, who is just lamenting how quiet the manor house is, how, how sad it is that all of the Clasculoids have decided to leave and everything and go on adventures. And she's there left alone. She walks in the living room and all hell's breaking loose. And immediately she's like, out, everybody out. <laughs> you know? So we're back to square one. And it's just, it was brilliant. It was absolutely fantastic. Hysterically funny and really had me on the edge of my seat because this series, among all of them, every single episode, every twist and turn, they constantly reinvented that wheel of surprise and shock. And I had no idea, no matter any predictions or speculations I could have put forth, time and time and time again, you know, not counting sort of the uh, underlining over arc of the story, the idea of, of what the classicaloids were, that they were created, and, and what the, you know, pursuits of Baksama was with the music. I mean, I'd, pre I'd been pretty much dead on with all of that stuff speculation-wise, but so much of the surrounding story I never would have guessed at any single time during the course of the series. And to have the two human beings, the two main human characters, Kanai and Sosuke, be such a, a center, you know, focus in trying to, you know, allay the appetites for music of these aliens with the classicaloids surrounding them and, and again using them as that through line i mean it just it was gangbusters it blew my ever love in mind and that's been the series on whole uh you know in, in the last couple of episodes because i knew we were winding down to the end of the season i've been kind of bummed out for several different reasons one being uh, i've had so much great conversation with you guys anyone who has taken the time to watch these videos and spared their time to then further converse with me in the comments i've had some really great comments comments that have taught me so much about the classical composers the classicaloids are based on and just great conversations and it kind of goes back to one of my regrets for the start of the series I was still very sick uh, I had been sick for some time when this series began and at that time I was covering all the anime episodes I was reviewing with false backgrounds and things like that I wasn't on camera and eventually I would get better and evolve sort of along the course of, of the series classicaloid where it continued beyond one one sort of uh, traditional anime season for 25 episodes rather than the uh, more typical 11 to 13. And eventually I, I felt well enough again. I came back on camera and I sort of evolved. I started the, the video that I did that in, that I first made my on-camera appearance again after a long time of not having done that with a false background that I then remove and I, I say, we're going to do them like this from now on. I'm going to be on camera. I'm going to talk about it. And I feel like with that transition, I got a lot more feedback uh, than I had at the beginning, you know, where I wasn't on camera. If you just heard my voice, it was kind of like a podcast, though sometimes the background would be blurry and you couldn't even tell what it was. Not that there was any reason to draw any attention to the background. It was mostly that I wanted to focus on what I was saying. But there's much more engagement. There's much more fluidity to that engagement if you can see me, if you can interact with me, and you know who you're interacting with. And I, I wish that I had not been sick when the series began and all through the length of it from episode 1 to episode 25. Do I wish, do I regret that I could not have been on camera? I, I wish I had been able to for every single episode. And maybe that engagement would have started much earlier, uh, whereas it was kind of you know a little past the halfway point that I finally was on camera again. And covering it and uh, but again this series has been a blast to watch and I love it to pieces I, I love all the classical music even when they modernize it I love the focus on you know the classical noise themselves and hearkening back to real-world aspects of those classical composers but that's only one stage of what has really been the most fulfilling for me talking about this series it, it isn't just watching it it has been coming on doing these videos and having that interaction with you guys, those of you, again, who I'm utmost grateful for taking the time and, and writing lengthy comments and, and having thorough conversations where I learn something and we share ideas and speculations. And it's just been 
so fulfilling an experience that without knowing before the end of this episode, was there ever going to be a season two? I was really kind of bummed out thinking, oh man, it's going to be so sad for this experience to come to an end. This shared experience with you guys, the conversations back and forth. I kind of go through this every single season when I'm covering anime because ultimately all of the shows come to an end and it's like starting from scratch to a degree. There are some tried and true followers that I have, friends of mine uh, who have followed me both from YouTube to Facebook and back again and things of that nature. Um, but every single season, it, it, it's, you know, sort of leaving the door open for people to leave and hopefully new people will come in and sometimes that doesn't happen right away. And so it's kind of a bum out. It's kind of a Sisyphean thing. Uh, if you're familiar with Sisyphus, the, the mythology of this character rolling that boulder up the hill, only having to do that, you know, sort of for infinity because it always rolls back down again. And this was his grand punishment in, in this mythological sense. And so it sometimes feels like starting from scratch all over again, you know, uh, having to find an equilibrium and how I'm going to present my thoughts on a series, hoping that people will flock to that and share in a conversation about it and you never know you never know until you're maybe sometimes two or three episodes into a series whether people are going to come and want to hear what you have to say and engage you in that conversation but classical Lloyd has been a tried and true event where every week it was probably the thing i looked the most forward to because it was guaranteed for some really fantastic engagement and conversation grand discussions that again as i say taught me a lot about these classical composers, their history, you know, classical music, which I've always had a love for, but I have to admit, I'm very much a novice about the large majority of it. And um, so it just added, you know, so much leaps and bounds to that experience of watching and enjoying this show, talking about how hilarious it has been and how absurd it has been from the very beginning, wondering about, again, that overarching sort of through line of what Kanai's father was up to, how he went about creating the classicaloids, what the classicaloids were, what the eight sounds was that Baksama was after, what purposes for his pursuit were there and everything like that, who would be the villain, you know, for a long time, I mean, it seemed like they were angling Baksama himself to be sort of the overarching antagonist, and then it turns out to be sort of the fangirlish right-hand lady, formerly of Kanai's father, that became as such for, for Baksama Mitsuru, and she creates these alternate, you know, Mitsuru Lloyds and everything. One was Sosuke when we first debuted to it, and then she created doppelgangers of all of the classic Lloyds. I mean, it has been a grand absurd, hilarious journey. There was an episode where the classical Lloyds turned into flower people. It's insane. <laughs> but it was followed by and surrounded by miraculous works of, of creativity and wonder along musical lines. And I can only hope, as I, I've talked to a couple of you guys in the comments, that this series, you know, sort of brings forth an awareness in, in people who might have curiosity about all the other kinds of music there are, classical music especially, would bring that awareness to them and, and sort of instill in them curiosity to want to go and seek out more information about each of these respective composers, which is something that's how I've been affected by it. And again, with that great discussion back and forth, I've learned a lot from a couple of you guys about that stuff. And it's just made this whole experience that much more fulfilling than it, I, I could have ever imagined, than it ever had been at the beginning, just watching the show and talking about it not being on camera, as I say. And, um, yeah, I mean, uh, it has been a hell of an experience. And I, I can't even tell you how bouncing off the walls I am, because if you watch the episode all the way to the end of the end credits, there is that title card that pops up with Kanai and Sosuke in their transformed forms, uh, you know, at the center of this episode. And it says, Season 2, coming in October. And I literally did like a, Oh, Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that was gonna be. I think I scared my neighbor through the wall, you know, um, <laughs> or like a jump when I did that. And uh, I just, I fist pumped. I was like, yes! They didn't even wait. They didn't let us, you know, sort of linger. Right at the end of the episode, a season two is coming. It's a definitive thing. October will bring us a continuation of Classic Lloyd. And I'm literally bouncing off the walls. Uh, you know, well, metaphorically, I guess. Obviously, the walls are not dented behind me. And I mean, you know, it's one of those things. I hope you guys who have been, you know, part of this fulfillment, part of this great discussion after each and every single episode, watching them yourselves, joining me for the conversation, adding to that conversation and discussion in the comments. I hope you guys will come back in October because, you know, it stands to reason, providing there are no uh, mitigating circumstances or, or any interferences, anything like that, 
I will probably surefire be back here covering Season 2 of Classical Oid all over again, and uh, hopefully this time from the beginning on camera, and uh, I, I hope to see you guys back again when that happens, when that finally debuts, and, and the conversations will continue and, and remain as fulfilling as they have up until this point. And uh, so yeah, as far as the finale episode goes, this was Gangbusters. As far as the series goes, I absolutely love and adore Classical Lloyd, and uh, I, I thank you all for taking the time to converse with me. I'm looking forward to the comments on this video as well, um, you know, uh, sort of wrapping things up with our thoughts and estimations of the series. And, uh, yeah, I, I cannot wait. I I'm going to be waiting with bated breath for Season 2. And, again, I hope to see you guys at that time. And just to bring it back to the way it all started, that'll be pretty much it for me. Hope this video finds you well, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.